Now that we've got the floor and the wall of assemblies basically set up so we have different types for modeling the house the way we want to, the next step is really to start thinking about putting in doors and windows and what those look like in the Schindler houses. And they're fairly standard. They're not all that different, but he did have some very specific details about how he liked to handle the trim. And what we're going to illustrate now is really how you can customize some of the standard families in Revit to go ahead and start simulating some of the Schindler details. Again, we're going to sort of make a first order approximation here. Later, we'll go back and talk about how you can really start customizing these to get exactly or very, very close to what Schindler had in mind. But just as a starting point, let's go ahead and think about, oh, just at a high level, what's different about his doors and windows that we want to try to emulate. So, for example, in the door detail, which we're looking at here, he has a little bit different idea of how things should be. He tends to like the idea that doors don't have a lot of trim to them. His doors tended to have, oh, just the stucco rounding around the corners, and they're fairly what I'll call blind. They don't have a lot of trim to them. So if I go back to the up here, you can sort of see oh, on the sides, you can see the edge of the jam, the door jam, but there's not trim on the inside or the outside. Although there is this little interior piece at the top. Okay, that's ultimately going to cover that stud, or that uh, top plate, excuse me, at the top. So we're going to leave about one and a half to two inches of trim there. So let's think about how we can go through and try to emulate something like that. It's typically a flat panel door, but a little bit different. So what we're going to do is start with, oh, let me go ahead and save this away. Just the whole idea of a flat panel door, and I can choose one of the existing ones or come up here into the door library and kind of choose that one. But what I'm going to want to do is actually go through and edit the family. Okay, so I have the standard single flush door. What I want to do is uh, just kind of change things. Maybe the best way to do it is to kind of pull it out over here in the project browser and say edit it here. Because that will open up the family so we can edit it. So here's the standard door type. And if we start looking at that door and kind of take a look at how it's defined, you can see if I even go to the wireframe view, it's defined of a lot of pieces. There's the jam piece. Okay, which is, uh, how is it defined for this door? It might be a sweep. There's the wall itself. That's the wall itself. There's, uh, let's see if I can find it there. I know the trim pieces are just big extrusions that are kind of on the outside. So let's talk about how we can start adjusting those. The idea is that generally Schindler didn't like to have a whole lot of uh, like trim on the sides. He just liked the jam in there. So what we can do is take these different pieces Okay, which are currently sort of defined, and we can even sort of take a look at how they're defined if I look at the uh, different views and maybe look at the front elevation or the back elevation. You can see there's the extrusion. Is there the trim width that's defined in there? Okay, and we're going to start ignoring some of those properties, at least in terms of these sides. What we're going to do is actually take this piece right here, this piece of uh, trim, which is the uh, either the interior or the exterior side, I think this is probably the interior side, and we're going to edit it. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to edit the extrusion. And what I'm going to do for my door, as opposed to going through and having all that trim down the sides, is follow Schindler's detail. More like this, where we only have the piece of trim at the top and just the jam on the sides. So let's take a look at that. What I can do is take this thing and just do a little trimming to it and turn. Let me take a, oh, I'll grab this and that. I'll grab this one to that one just so I can sort of like uh, create the, I'm only doing just really creating lines for the profile. So I have a little piece of trim at the top right now. I still have to get rid of uh, these pieces on the sides. And those little pieces at the bottom because I can only have a single loop or can need a continuous loop. Let me go and say finish that. Okay, and now I have a little piece of trim at the top. Let's take a look at that in 3D. Maybe uh, just put it back in here in terms of shaded so you can see it. Okay, what else do we need in there? Looks like there's still what's called the uh, model lines, the symbolic representation. We can go and take some of those out though. Well, let me kind of show you where we get to those. Uh, let's take it out there. In here, I can pull that over. What those are, those are all about just basically how things represent in a 2D representation as opposed to a 3D representation. So for these, I just want to take that out and pull that over. Okay, now if you like that for the exterior or the interior, I forget which side this is, let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. I will go through and look at the back. 
edit it right here again with the extrusion. Again, do the trimming. I'll trim, oh, this to this. I'll trim this to this. That's just to sort of extend those lines up. And I'll trim in the opposite direction to kind of clean out the ones I don't want. Get rid of this, get rid of that. Okay, and I'll finish that up. Okay, and even here, if I shade this, you can sort of hidden line it. You can see uh, we still have those symbolic lines. Those are just lines. And we can sort of move those things over. Actually, I'll just take out these on the side. And this one up here, I'll just move on over. Now, we have something which we think is an awful lot like a Schindler door. Let's go ahead and see if uh, how well it works, though, if we go through and flex it. I can take a look at the properties. Uh, let me take a look at the family types. And the trim thickness right now is currently set to, or the trim width is about three inches. I think I want closer to two inches. Let me see if I can get that to sort of uh, push on down. It looks like that little top piece of trim did drop on down. That looks pretty good. Let's just try it in terms of different uh, widths. 32 inch. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, 34 inch. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we have some different sizes. The final thing is to really think about what is the size of his doors. And as far as I can tell, the size of his doors, he wants them to actually be about six foot nine at the top, which is a little bit strange. Usually they're six foot eight, but we'll go for that. So let's go through and create some types, which are Schindler types. And we'll say 36 by, and I can either rename this or dupe it. Let me add a type, which is going to, oops, not a parameter, excuse me, a new type. I'm going to make a 36 by 81 inches, six foot nine. Okay, and that'll be 36 by, there it is, six foot nine. And I can make some more if I would need to. Um, maybe like a, a, oh, like a 32 by 81 also. Again, I'll uh, say a new type. I'll say it's, oh, I didn't do a very good job of putting the dimensions in there, did I? And that's going to be 32 wide. Okay, now we have a basic Schindler door type. Let's go ahead and say okay to that. Now, don't just save because saving will go through and overwrite the existing one. I'm going to save this as my, and I'll call this my uh, single flush. But maybe even go ahead and say a Schindler single flush just because it's part of our Schindler language. Save that away, and I'll load that into the project. And I'll put it into the wall of type examples project. Okay, let's see how we can go through and use that. Over here, I have my standard door over there. Let's instead pull down to one of my new improved Schindler doors. And it looks pretty good. In the same sense though, oh, let's see where that door condition would actually occur. Let's see if we can kind of pop it into one of the exterior walls. I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit. So for my Schindler door, let's go ahead and take one of those again. I'll put it into this wall. Okay. And you can see we start to have, I think the condition that he liked. That's looking a little bit tall in terms of what's going on over there. Why is that looking tall? Let's think about this. I made it 91 inches. I think I want it to be 91 inches. Okay, we've got that door in there. The head height or the head trim doesn't look quite right yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. If I choose that door, let's see if we can figure this out. If I choose the door. There we go. Let me take a look at the properties. Ah, the problem here is the trim width for that top is still too big. Let's make it down to one and a half, which I think will make it match the top. Very good. And that's kind of the detail that uh, Schindler tend to like. Okay, let's go ahead and do something similar. Oh, we'll put something like that in the outside wall. Over in here, we'll take that same sort of door. We'll say home door and we'll put one of those Schindler doors in there again using the 81 inch tall door. We'll pop it in over here. OK, 
And here you can sort of see the detail that he liked where really the trim right at the top really is just uh, kind of perfectly aligned with uh, just really where that break is between the uh, top of the wall and uh, you know, the wood frame above it, stuff like that. So it's looking pretty good over there. Let's even go through, yeah, there it's looking nicely on that side. Let's flip over to this side. Okay, looking good. So that's a pretty good approximation of the Schindler door, although we'll go ahead and uh, kind of adapt that and make it look a little better even next time. Okay, now that we've customized a Schindler door to kind of be something similar to what he had in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the windows too. The windows actually have sort of a similar detail to them, where if we go through and take a look at the windows, he has this notion that again, there's sort of some framing on the side, there's some trim at the top. In fact, that trim often turns into, oh, either some sort of special uh, detail, like a shelf where we can sort of hang a, like a little curtain valance to hide that or a little light shelf where we kind of conceal a little bit of light within there. There's a lot of things he does with that piece of trim or up the top of the window heads. Let's kind of do something very basic right now, which is to just go through and kind of take off the trim on the sides and go ahead and just leave a piece of trim at the top. We can also take a look at the, oh, what is it, the window sill. He often projects that, but doesn't have anything projecting on the inside. He likes to kind of roll the, uh, Looks like he's rolling just the, the curtains or the, the windowsill up in there. I think I'm reading that right. That might be the inside versus the outside. But I think, yeah, we'll take a look at that and we can adapt that a little bit more. It's one of the beauties of doing things as these component families is if we make a wrong assumption, we can go ahead and go ahead and fix it later by just fixing it in the component and the model will update itself. So let's switch back over to Revit. I'm going to take a look at, oh, let's do the sash window. Uh, the sash window being... Oh, which one is that? As opposed to the sliding window, it looks like it's one where he's hinging it up. Um, uh, yeah, it looks like it's um, it's got a hinge at the top, as best I can tell. Let's take a look at that. Looks like what's going on there, a hinge sash. That's the head, it's showing the hinge versus on the side. Okay, as opposed to, so I think those are flipping up. If they're flipping sideways, we can do it with a casement window, but we'll do it with an awning window instead. Yeah, as a starting point, let's take a look. So what we'll do is we'll go to the window tool and we have these fixed windows which are in there right now. We wanna load in something a little bit different as a starting point. Let me go through and yeah, just go to the windows, see if I can find a nice awning window with some trim. Okay, an awning window being one that hinges at the top. I'll load that in. And again, that's similar to what we want, but not exactly. We're gonna do some changes to that. So what I'll do is I'll go down into the families and find it. I'm going to edit that by right clicking and say edit the family. Okay, and it'll come up here. Let me save as just right away this time, just so I don't mistakenly save by accident. It's kind of a good thing to do right at the beginning. I'll call this a Schindler awning with trim. Just so we have that saved as a special type and I'm gonna put it in my own documents as opposed to the main library for right now. Okay, the similar sort of thing as what we did before. If we go through and look at these types, we can choose any different window. There is a trim width to the whole thing right now. If we kind of take a look at the family types, you'll see that, oh, what, there's a trim projection and a trim width on the interior and the exterior. This is a very kind of well-defined window. I can make that one and a half and uh, one and a half if I want to do it on both sides. We'll keep on adjusting that as we need be. Okay, in terms of how far it sticks out or sticks in, that's what the projection is. So just uh, the thickness of the trim in terms of how far it's coming in. Let's just go through and edit the, uh, what I'll call the, uh, the, 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 the width of the trim because that's actually sort of the most, you know, you know, a radical thing that's different about his windows than the other ones, where we'll again take that, we'll edit the extrusion, and we want to do that. We can even do it in 3D if I want to. I will take that and trim it to this. I'll take this and trim it to that. I will take this long line and trim it to the top, and then I'll take the lower part and trim it to that. Then I can take out the excess pieces. I think I'm getting that right. I'm just going to make sure. It's a little hard to tell in 3D. Actually, it looks like this is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and actually turn on 
the visibility graphics. And let me turn on all the reference planes so we can see this guy. I think we're gonna have to define this a little bit differently. Let me look at the uh, front placement or the front side view. Take a look. Here's the deal. We want that piece of trim in there. Okay, but we wanna actually sort of do it a little bit different. What we want to do is, okay, we still want to have the trim width, that's fine. But, okay, let me finish taking out the sides. We know we don't want those. And we can go ahead and get rid of it at the bottom, too. We don't want that piece. Okay. So in terms of what's going on here, we do want to go ahead and have that to be a little bit different about how it's coming together because what we want to do is actually have that trim extend to the outside of the jam or the rough opening. So what I'm going to do is do a little realignment. I'm going to say a line and I'm going to sort of take that line, not the edge of the window, but that line and lock it to there. And similarly, I'm going to take uh, this line here and lock it to there. Okay, that'll actually get it to extend out the full width of that. In the other direction, we have the whole issue of really, oh, where is that relative to the rough opening? Let me finish that for now. That's probably pretty good. Let's see how that's going. It's always a little bit, you know, uh, what, what I call risky changing families, but we can always go through and fix things later. Let's see how that looks in terms of that side now. So it looks pretty good in terms of what's happening there. Let's orbit this around a little bit. Let's look at that trim on the side. I got the sash in there. I think that's looking pretty close to what we have in mind. Let's do it on the other side though too, just to be certain. Actually, we should change sizes just to make sure that it's thing that's resizing properly. Yep, that's looking pretty good in terms of what we want. Okay. And we will go through and do that on the other side. So if we do that on the interior side, I did it on the interior of the exterior last time. I always forget. Looks like that's the piece right there. Let's go ahead and edit it. And the same sort of thing. What I'm going to do is do some trimming where I will trim this to this. Let's see if I got that right. Trim that again here to here. I think that's going to be okay. I think it's referring to some constraints that just no longer apply. Let me take out these pieces over here. Take out this piece down here and this piece down here. And then finally, I'm going to do that little readjustment. I'm going to align. AL is the tool that gets me that really quickly. From this line over here, I'm going to pull that trim out to there and lock it to there instead. So what I'm doing is moving it. That's why it's complaining a little bit. And again, I'll apologize. This is a little bit, uh, it's a little advanced in terms of what I'm doing. We don't have to get this deep in terms of this first level of modeling, but hopefully this will give us something that's a little bit more accurate. Let me say, uh, let's switch back to the 3D view. Here it is on that side. There it is on that side. Let's just kind of switch to a different family size. Okay, that's looking pretty good on that side. And it's looking pretty good on that side. Okay, so I think we have something that's pretty close right now. Let me save that away. And we will load that into the project. So what do we do with our Schindler window now that we have it in there? Let's go on over to, uh, we can put it in one of the 3D views or in one of the 2D views either way. Let me kind of rotate this around. And I'll put it into that exterior wall. This is that whole thing, depending on which side the sill is supposed to be on, whether it's on the inside or the outside, whatever's supposed to happen in there. We can flip this window if we want to. By uh, I will choose it, and I can say flip the facing, okay, and that'll kind of rotate it around that way. Oh, there's a little trim around it. In terms of the height, let's kind of adjust some of these things. We know the height is supposed to be, what did we decide? It was like six foot, ten and a half for the head height. 
And then if the trim condition's there, we could edit that trim. And instead of being, oh, trim width of three and a half, we actually want it to be about one and a half. So we should uh, basically change our sizes to kind of match what we need to. Okay, that's a little bit closer to what we have in mind. So that's actually not looking too bad right now. So we're going to want to do that to a couple different window types. We'll want to do that same sort of basic operation for the, uh, what was this? This was the awning window, the sash window. We'd want to do the same thing for a sliding window, as well as to a couple of different fixed windows. And I won't show you all that in the video. I'll go ahead and kind of create a couple and put it into the... Uh, the example data set just so you sort of have those available to kind of work with. But you can imagine sort of doing a very similar thing where we load a standard family and what we're going to do is just sort of edit the trim all around it to only leave that top piece and adjust the, uh, the thickness of that trim. So I'll pause the video right now, create a couple of those, and then we'll jump back in with some of the final things we want to show you. Okay, we're returning after a brief break, and what I've done in the interim is actually created a couple more types for you. So there's a awning with trim, a fixed with a trim, and now a slider with trim. And they're all going to be available out there on the Dropbox for you to play with. So uh, go ahead and take those. They're just windows that sort of different conditions of basically uh, doing the same thing where I've adapted them to... Uh, oh, just to use the... Uh, you have the different trim condition that uh, Schindler preferred. So if we go through and choose the window, and I, for example, put the slider in with trim. Let's just kind of put some big old size in there. The Schindler slider with trim, like a gigantic one like this. I'll put it in. We'll take its uh, head height. And again, the head height is going to go ahead and match that. What did I say? It was six foot ten and a half. Okay, and then we need to adjust the actual the trim height itself, and that trim is going to be oh, one and a half. And again, these are all just sort of placeholders for now. We'll learn how to sort of get even more accurate to the, the true Schindler details as we kind of keep on going. Okay, so there's a couple of conditions we want to talk about in terms of placing them. I've We've been looking at the standard exterior wall conditions, and we want to take a look at it as a special case is that transom condition. So let's take a look at it in the detail just to refresh ourselves. And in the detail, what happens here is we have the lower wall, but we have the upper wall kind of starting at the six foot, uh, what did we decide it was? At the six foot ten and a half, and continuing up to whatever height that's going to be, with a little window inserted in there where he's actually using that upper wall as a beam to go ahead and support the roof in that transom condition. So let's go ahead and create one of those just so we can sort of see what that looks like too, so you can include it in your language. For the transom condition, we'll go ahead and do one out over here where we have this lower wall at that, uh, yeah, at that level, just kind of down at the first floor level, where we'll put the upper wall in above it. So let me go to the floor plan view. It's going to happen up here on this side. We're going to put it in another wall. And this is just going to be the upper wall as opposed to the lower one, the one that's actually going to serve as a beam too. So let me choose an upper two inch wood okay, if we don't have the plastic condition too. In terms of the base of that, the base offset is we could actually go through and put it at the soffit level. And let me make sure I got that right in terms of... Uh, as I remember properly, it is six foot ten and a half. Perfect. So we can go through and put that in at the soffit level. And how high is it going to continue? It's just really however high it needs to be, whether it's level two or unconnected a certain distance, whatever it's going to be in terms of uh, how high he had it. We'll go through and put one of those in a certain distance back to sort of form the clear story. Now here's the hard part. You're not going to see it because we're in the floor plan level and it's above our head right now. If I move the cutting plane, I'd see it. This is that kind of common thing where you get the warning. Or if I did it in the ceiling framing plan, you'd see it there. Or the ceiling plan, you'd see it there. Let's just take a look at it in 3D. There it is. And I can look at it in section two and sort of understand it. And for putting the window in there, what are we going to do with the window? It looks like the windows he's typically put in there at, what was he leaving? He was always leaving about six inches to the bottom of the window. So we can do that same thing. Let me go through and grab some sort of window. And this window is going to be a fixed window. It could be an awning window. It just kind of depends. He has both conditions at different points. Let me grab a fixed window. 
There we go. Not a very tall one, like a 24, uh, like a 16 inch tall one, something like that. And we'll go ahead and just place it right into here. It's uh, hanging out a little bit right now. That's not very good looking. Oh, actually I have the wrong dimension. It's like 16 by 48 tall. Let's go ahead and kind of switch that around. I really want it more uh, duplicated. I want it to be like 48 by 16. So I'll say one foot four by four feet wide over there. Okay, we can also say really what the height is, the level off of that, and if I want it to be six inches, that's where I put it in. Based on the level soffit, it's six inches above that. Okay, this one probably has a lot more sill than it needs to, because I think his little awning windows didn't have nearly as much sill. So sill height, uh, trim projection, Hmm. I might need to go through and add that in as a parameter so I can go ahead and adjust that or take it out in the family so I can do what I need to. Okay, But I have that sort of basic condition now. Then to sort of understand what's going on, oh, let's go back to, well, what do I want to do? Let's look at the section, see if I can see it there. So I can almost see it right there. There's basically the awning window. The section's cut a little bit out, but there's the uh, clear story. What we're going to do later is add the roof in and the roof in here with a soffit to go ahead and match his condition, which is these pieces right here, this plank roof with a little bit of fascia on it, to go ahead and complete that. But we'll save that one for next time.